Okay, so let's talk cheat meals. First of all, the term cheat meal is just ridiculous and stupid, if I'm being honest. So what are you cheating on? Like you're cheating on a test? Are you cheating on your diet? So that's the first step, getting rid of that term, getting rid of anything that's temporary like diet. When you change your nutrition, you're changing your nutrition. It doesn't mean that foods are off limits. As a matter of fact, you need to reframe your brain and your mindset to include all foods. doesn't mean you have to eat all of the foods, but once you reframe your brain to allow you to have anything, that's going to be the key for you to realize that you don't need to have these type of meals all the time. You may want to have some pizza, you may not. But the magic happens when you realize that you can have anything you want, but you just don't want the foods anymore. And that applies to any foods, sweets, junk food, it applies to booze. Where the magic happens is realizing that you can be in any environment now, changing your environment is absolutely helpful. So, if you want to get all the junk food out of your pantry, that's going to be helpful. If it's not around, you're going to have to go out to eat it, for sure. But, the reality is, if you have a family, you live with someone other than yourself, they may not be on the same nutrition plan. They may not be on the same path as far as what foods they like, what foods they have off limits. And so for me, for example, it's going to be sweets. Now, I used to be the person that I couldn't walk past the pantry. If there was a brownie or a cookie in the pantry, I was going to eat it. If there was a sleeve of Girl Scout cookies, I was going to eat probably the whole sleeve. And now, over time, with the right support and training yourself, training your brain, that you can have it and maybe you just have one. Or maybe you don't need it at all and you just keep walking. The reality is you're not going to avoid business lunches and business dinners and holidays and parties and you don't want to avoid social situations. So if you can go to dinner, go to dinner, but instead of getting that 2,000 calorie pasta dish, opt for something with half the calories. The key is knowing that you can have it, but you don't want it. Not missing out. If you tell yourself you're cutting it out temporarily, you're going to want it more. And so that is really why diets fail. That's why people look at nutrition on a temporary basis instead of a permanent basis. Doesn't mean you can't ever have it and you're likely going to have foods that you enjoy, but once you remove something because you don't need it and you don't want it, and you realize that you start to feel better, like cutting out fast food, if you go 30 days without fast food, someone that's at least eating fast food once a week, a lot of people much more than that, but if you cut it out and realize that it was probably making you feel like crap, and now you go back and you eat it and it tastes great, but then within a few hours you feel like crap, you're going to want it less and less. And so you can go to that same, and trust me, anyone that knows me, Taco Bell is was my place. I could go throw down three or four bean burritos, easy, easy. And I can't tell you the last time I've had it, doesn't mean I'm never going to have a bean burrito again, but I know that generally it's going to make me feel like crap. So I'm going to opt for something else. And even if I do go there, let's say you're in a rush, you're in a pinch, you're, you know, 
taking a road trip and it's the only restaurant, you can find other things. You can find grilled chicken sandwiches on a menu or getting a grilled chicken salad with double chicken. Go to Wendy's and get some chili. There, there's other options that are better. So you don't need to stop going to a certain restaurant avoiding social situations that's really the key here is if you want to make it long term you absolutely have to figure out a way to not want to have it anymore you have to find a way to put yourself in situations that you normally would have just let let loose you would have let your guard down you would have just said ah eh, when in Rome, I'm going to eat as much as I want. So instead of restricting yourself, tell yourself you can have it, but maybe it's going to make you feel like crap. Maybe you just would rather have more energy and the better foods, the higher quality food, I should say, starts tasting better. And the lower quality food starts tasting worse. Maybe instead of going out and having six beers with the boys you don't have anything because you have goals and you're still cool with with going out and just having something else other than alcohol while everyone else is drinking and you're okay with it that's the key here you have to be okay with it and not feel like you're missing out if there's FOMO it's not working so how do you get to that point? Well, you have to have patience. It's going to take time. You're going to have slip-ups, but generally what's going to happen is the slip-ups will be less and less until you're totally comfortable with, hey, you know what? I'm going to this restaurant. They have the best pizza in town. I'm having some. But what you'll find is maybe you would have had six pieces, six slices, and now you're going to have two nothing's perfect and every plan differs by individual so the key is stop letting perfection get in the way you can't let perfection get in the way and you have to reframe your brain to tell yourself you could have it but you don't need it you don't want it and you're cool with it that's really where the magic happens it's as simple as that but simple doesn't mean easy. Again, it will take time. You can put yourself in a situation that you would have failed a month ago, a year ago, five years ago, and be successful. It might not be 100%, but that's really when you're going to find is stop using cheat meal and diet and, and all these terms and rewarding yourself you're not rewarding yourself you're exercising because you can and everyone should be grateful that they can exercise everyone should be grateful that they have access to high quality foods so it's not a reward it's not a punishment to eat healthy either you should be grateful that you can do it which really when people talk about mindset that is exactly what they're talking about is being okay and being energetic and being positive about what it is you're trying to accomplish as opposed to looking at it as some kind of punishment because going to the gym is not a punishment you should look forward to it you should look forward to the process and it always comes back to that looking forward to the process so the meals that you eat day in and day out should taste good they should fit what you like, not what someone online says you should eat. They should work for what your goals are. If it's weight loss, if it's building muscle, if it's just being healthy and not having any type of body transformation goals whatsoever. Whatever fits you, as long as you know that you feel good and that you're happy doing it and it's not a short-term fix. You're not doing this for 30 days 60 days, 90 days, or even a year. You're not doing that. Right now, from now on, you are, at this point, you can have anything you want. 
you choose not to and you're cool with it. So hopefully these tips help as far as developing your mindset because really this applies to anything. It's not just nutrition, but I find that it's the most helpful when people realize that they have to actually retrain and reframe their mind instead of looking at it as a temporary fix. Agree? Disagree? Let me know. I'm curious. Hope this helps.